Eggplant could be so smart as to pick one machine that plays Sega Genesis and Sega CDs. Hey, it's a CD player, plus you get stuff for free. So now let's see what you can do when you apply yourself. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Player One Start. So I was out on a thrifting run, and I came across a bunch of CD titles that were kind of intriguing to me. I recognized the labeling on the discs as CD plus G. What is a CD plus G, and how do they relate to some of the game consoles I've featured on this channel? Well, let's go ahead and dive into that. One hidden feature of the early game consoles that used CDs during this time period is the fact that they could play CD plus G discs, also known as CD and graphics or just TV graphics. This is an extension of the compact disc standard that can present low resolution graphics alongside the audio data on the disc when it's played on a compatible device. CD plus G discs were often used for karaoke machines, which used this functionality to present on-screen lyrics for the song contained on the disc. The CD plus G specifications were published by Sony and Philips in an updated revision of their Redbook specifications. These discs were most often used in dedicated karaoke machines. However, other consumer devices that play this format include the NEC TurboGrafx CD, the Philips CDI, the Sega CD, Sega Saturn, JVC XI, 3DO Interactive Multiplayer, Amiga 32 and Commodore CD TV, as well as the Atari Jaguar CD. Some CD-ROM drives on computers can also read this data. Pioneer's Laser Active Player can also play CD plus G discs, as long as they have the proper hardware installed. And since 2003, even some standalone DVD players have supported the CD plus G format. The CD plus G format takes advantage of the subcode channels R through W, which are unused through the audio CD formats. Subcode or subchannel data refers to data contained in a compact disc in addition to digital audio or user data, which is used for control and playback of the CD. These six bits are used to store the graphics information. As you can imagine, not much data can be stored in this area, so data is very slow to load onto the screen. This leads to the graphics being very slowly populated onto the screen, only as quickly as the data being read can allow. In this system, a 16-color 4-bit graphic is displayed on a raster field, which is 300 by 216 pixels in size. Of this area, only the central 288 by 192 area is used with a flat color border drawn around it. On a side note, there was an extended graphics standard that improved on this format, which allowed up to 256 colors, however its use is very rare. When looking at CD titles on the store shelf, there wasn't much to differentiate a compact disc with graphics than a regular compact audio disc. The cases were the same size, and if you were to buy one of these discs, you can actually play it in an audio CD player, albeit without the graphics mode. There were other uses besides karaoke. Some audio CDs simply included bonus features such as images that would accompany the music. And as these CDs will play in a normal CD player, some people may even be unaware that they were using this disc and missing some of the graphical features. One thing I noticed on all of these discs is that you can physically see the track separation on the disc, but I'm not quite sure if all of them have the same spacing. The biggest way to tell if you have one of these discs is to look for the compact digital audio and graphics logo on the disc. Some of them will even print it on the case, but not all of them as in this example. And just for comparison, here is a regular CD that includes no graphical format whatsoever. This disc does not show the visible track separation as well as other discs, but it is still barely visible in person. Sadly, none of the game consoles has an input for a microphone, so you can just use your television set as a karaoke machine. My guess is they thought that you would hook in your game console to some sort of stereo system where you could input a microphone and blend the audio together manually. To demonstrate out how this technology works, I decided to go ahead and test it out on my Sega CD and 32X setup here because it is the only one that is currently hooked up. 
And I should note the selection of media I have for this only comes from a couple of Goodwill finds, so this is not representative of the music that I would listen to on here or even sing along with, but I did choose a few songs that people may recognize. So when you first start up the Sega CD, you actually have to press start to access the CD-ROM playback menu. And something that's very important that I did forget to do the first couple of times is you actually have to select that you're playing a CD plus G type disc so it knows to display the graphics. Once you have turned that on, you can go back up to the play button and then get out of the menu and it should start playing the disc like normal. As I stated before, the data access is very slow due to the fact that they're using just a few unused bits in each track and the data can be visibly seen loading on the screen. That's why it takes so long for it to filter down. The memory of the Sega CD itself is actually storing the graphics in memory so it'll keep displaying everything on the screen while it adds new information. This is actually just fast enough for it to load screen lyrics on and color the text in at about the same speed as it needs to be said. The Sega CD is actually capable of producing more colors on the screen, however it is limited to the data that is kept onto the CD as well, so you can tell that they are using basically 16 primary colors. And although that would be seen as limited for video games, it actually works out perfect for this purpose where you just need to show text on the screen with some high contrast. On the top of the screen during each track, you can see the time elapsed and which track number you are on. I'm not quite sure what the CH is for. Again, I am limited by the selection I was able to find in my area, but I did pick a few songs that I think would be kind of nostalgic as they are getting to the point where they're going to start being played on oldie stations here pretty soon. So I'll show you a few more examples I have here in my collection. I will have to keep these brief due to the fact that I will get claimed if I go too long.
while, there's really not much more to say. There were other uses for this standard other than just karaoke, as they could also be used to store photo libraries. Back in the 80s and early 90s, digital photos were a rarity as there were no consumer digital cameras when this standard was invented, so they had to be professionally made by a studio, and the limited number of colors at first made that not a really desirable option. I used my Sega CD to view these discs, however there are other game consoles in my collection that are capable of playing these discs, and I may revisit these discs when I review those consoles. But for now, that's actually going to wrap it up for this video. Remember, if you like what you see, please make sure you leave a thumbs up on this video, and leave a comment below, let me know what you liked about today's video, let me know what you'd like to see in the future, stay tuned because I have more content coming, and I will see you in the next one. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.